All right, what's up you guys? This is Devin from Project Sax and we're back for another scale tutorial. We're gonna be doing all the scales. I know I've been going for a little while, but we're gonna be finishing up the scales. The major scales, it's been delayed too long. Major scales are gonna be finished by the end of this week. It should be as long as everything uploads on time and accurately. All right now, since we last uh, did this, we were on the sharps. And we finish with the sharps with F sharp major, which is also G flat major. So we're going to start with the flats. Um, as far as the scales go in the circular fifths, as far as the keys go, uh, if you don't have a circular fifths pattern, you can just go online and check that out. What a circular fifths pattern is, it's just going to tell you the order of the key signatures in basic terms. Now, there's a long winded definition for it, but I'm just going to leave it at that. It's just for your scales and the order of each key. Basically, the difficult, the degree of difficulty that each scale has, it just goes up by a sharp, depending on what side of the circle, cycle of four circle of fifths you're on. Uh, it's actually the cycle of fifths, circle of fourths. Doesn't matter. It's the same sheet. We look it up on Google. What you want to do is you want to go do an image search on Google, print it out. And you want to get one that has each uh, key signature on it, so it tells you where each sharp comes in, where each sharp is added for each key signature. But now we're on F. That's the first. That's the first scale with the first flat on it. Now C is in the middle. C has no sharps or flat, so it's kind of neutral. If you want to say it like that, the sharps are on the right side if I'm not mistaken of the uh, circle of fifths and um, the flats are on the opposite side and they also on the outside are the major keys and on the inside should be the minor keys so um, that's a thing that we're going by so if you hear me say that then you know what I'm talking about but if you don't you really do need it if you're a beginner especially if you want to you know practice this in order and actually get something out of practicing the, you know scales get something extra you know theory, theory wise so you'll know exactly not just playing the skills just to play them but actually getting something much more deeper because the scales are the roots of each instrument uh, not instrument but um song and pretty much every song is based off a key and every key is based off a scale um and basically it's going to really help you learn your instrument up and down because when we play scales we play from bottom to top now, um, as these tutorials go along, like I said, when I started the sharps, um, you, we are not going to keep telling you guys the basics. For instance, today we're going to be doing, um, let's see, uh, F major for the alto saxophone. That is concert A flat. Now, every concert key is played in, you know, when you say, okay, every, since every instrument has a different key, it's tuned to a different key. Since every instrument is tuned to a different key, when you're playing in big ensemble-like settings, we have to have a general key where we tell everybody, you know, hey, this is the key we're playing in. You have to transpose your instrument to make sure you start off on the right note or you're playing the right pitch. So we call that pitch the concert pitch. So when we say concert A flat, everybody knows what note they start on for their instrument. In this case, for the alto saxophone, when they say concert A flat, we start on F natural. So, we're going to do the F natural major scale. There's a difference between F natural and F sharp, but today is going to be F natural. The last scale we did was actually F sharp, ironically. But, um, yeah, so F, F major for the alto saxophone. The, um, the flat you have to worry about in this um, scale is B flat. Just make sure when you play your B that it's flat. In every um, passage that you play, when you're in the key of F, make sure your B is flat unless you have an accident that says otherwise. <laughs> arpeggio is is basically an outline of the actual key it's the actual chord itself but since this is a single voice instrument it's not like a piano where you could just put one hand down and play all three notes of the chord or a triad or or a, a sustain or whatever chord you're playing you can't do that on this instrument because this instrument makes each single note um, and you have to put down more than one finger just to play one note 
So um, in that, in that, uh, basically, I'm just saying that this is a single voice instrument. It cannot make a chord on its own. It has to have another saxophone beside it, another player beside it. So when we're playing our arpeggios, that's basically us playing a chord. We're playing the notes of the chord, but we can't play them all together like a piano or a guitar could. So when we play our um, arpeggios. We're playing the actual chord, the um, concert A flat or F major chord for the alto saxophone. Um, so you're probably gonna it's gonna be the A flat chord because saxophones can't really play chords. So it's uh, concert A flat chord. So the first note is um, it's gonna be the first, the third, the fifth note. The first, the third, and the fifth. Um, and then you go back to the root, but you play it up an octave. So that's the root. You play it up an octave. So that's when that's when that last note comes in. When it's just it's really for exercise purposes. That's the chord. But when you do those octave jumps, that's mainly for exercise purposes that I've can come by in my experience. So when you're playing your skills, pretty pretty much you need to make them harder for yourself. Play those octave jumps. Go from the lowest note and mimic that note, whatever your root note is, and play it higher. So try to find that because that'll help you adjust your armature sparingly through each um, each octave. So my name is Devin with Project Sax, and I'll see you guys later.